miss. Joining me in tonight's big question to talk about the game is the man who knows all about tough matches against the Italians. It's England football legend Paul Ince. Paul, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely okay. devastating result. How are you feeling? Oh, not great. <laughs> that's, that's uh, uh, I mean, it's just, it's just like creating history again, you know, going back to um, UR96 with the Germans, uh, losing out in the penalty um, shootout to them. Um, and, you know, at the fair this time, I actually fancy this, you know, I think to be, you know, we wasn't, we got off to such a great start getting the first goal. Um, and I, I just thought we were going to hold on and, and we didn't. And when it went to penalties, I just thought, you know, this is our time. I think everybody thought it was our time. You know, you could sense the belief, you can sense, you could uh, sense the faith in, in, you know, in the crowd that we were going to do it. And, um, you know, it's a hard one to take. It is a hard one to take because, you know, I go back to 2018. You know, in the World Cup, when um, you know we had a great passage to get through to the semi-finals, and we ended up losing to, to uh, Croatia, and and I thought you know we were, we were on the right side of the draw this time, and um, the path was pretty clear for us to get to the final. Um, but I knew that obviously playing the Italians was always going to be tough. You know, the record is you know second to second to none, to be fair, and um, you know it was a tough game. I kind of I, I kind of feel that we probably scored too early. You know, if that kind of makes sense, you know, people say you can never score too early, but, you know, I felt we scored too early because after that, we kind of start to drop deep and try to defend the goal. And that just allowed the, the Italians to have the um, initiative. And um, once they got that goal, you know, I thought we were in trouble, but we did well to get it to penalties. And then, you know, we know from 96, we know from 98, when I, when I myself missed a penalty in, 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 um, against Argentina, in France, you know, it's, it's, it's the, probably the one of the worst feelings, you know, you can ever, ever have. And, um, you know, it's hard when people try to console you. Is it hard? You can't be consoled because, it, you know, it's terrible. So I, I, for one, know how the likes of Sacco and Sancho and Rashford, have, you know, what they're going through. You know, this was a massive moment for them. And unfortunately, we put it at the last hurdle. And Paul, we're just taking a look at the scenes in Rome tonight where you can imagine there are huge celebrations. But I think you have to think long and hard, don't you, about this England team and the pride they've brought back to the Three Lions. There was something special about this team. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it feels to me it's kind of parallel to 96. You know, it was so, 96 was so iconic in the way, you know, with the three lines, you know, on, on his shirt, it's coming home, you know, it's kind of, that's probably 96 is probably steeped in history, even though we can actually win the tournament. I think the fact that we've actually come out of a, a pandemic, you know, everyone's been really negative for the last, you know, 18 months. And um, we put our nation back at our feet. We've kind of got a smile on people's faces and it's not just football fans, you know, it's non-related football fans, you know, and, you know, that's what this team has done. And, you know, we can be proud of that. We can really, really be proud of that. And um, as much as it hurts now, when <laughs> you see the scenes in Italy, you know, I know by playing in Italy, how, how passionate the fans are. Uh, as much as it hurts now, you know, we've kind of brought the nation back together again. And, you know, that's, that's the greatest thing we can take out of it. You know, yes, it was a great opportunity to win a major trophy. We haven't, we haven't done that in 55 years. Um, and we all believed and all hoped and prayed that this was our time, you know, especially after the, the Denmark game where we got that fortunate penalty with Sterling. Um, we believed luck was on our side. You know, we've had probably, you know, all our games have been at home apart from the one against Ukraine in Rome. So everything was geared to us winning this tournament. So to fall at the last hurdle, you know, is, is a major, major blow. So, look, let's just talk a bit more about that penalty shootout. It looked so good with those early Kane and Maguire goals. But talk to me about Rashford, Sancho and Saka. What, what do you think happened? As you said, Paul, you've been there. You, you know what it's like in that moment. Uh, was it a mental thing or is the Italian goalkeeper just too good? I think, I think what you've got to remember and understand is that, you know, when you talk about Harry Kane, you talk about Maguire... We're talking about two players 
who who have got bags of experience. You know, when you you know maybe Rashford to a certain degree, you know, he takes them from Manchester United most of the time before Fernandez came into the into the Manchester United side. But the likes of Saka, you know, such a young kid, Sancho, such a young kid, you know, for them to step up in, in that kind of environment, you know, with a higher octane game and the fans, you know, there, there's an element of pressure. And, um, you know, I felt that pressure at 28. Um, so for these young players, you know, they knew that, you know, the nation was relying on them to score that goal, those goals. And the fact that they haven't, you know, they would never forget that moment, but also that moment will make them stronger. And ultimately, as a manager, and Gary Southgate has been in that position, you know, you pick your spot, you don't change your mind, and if the keeper goes the right way, there's not much you can do about it. Um, and yeah, listen, they, they, they won't sleep tonight, let me tell you now, because I never slept, you know, in 98, but it will make them stronger, that's for sure, for the World Cup in, uh, next year in Qatar. And they are heroes, aren't they? We, we need to remember that. They are heroes. The team had to win tonight. And they have been heroic over the course of, of this tournament. And I think, Paul, they haven't just been heroic in how they've played. They've been heroic in their conduct off the pitch, too. Yeah, very much so. You know, as, you know I, think, I think... And a lot of credit's got to go to Gareth Southgate. Um, the way he's kind of kept the team grounded when the nation was getting excited. Um, you know, it's easy to get carried away with, you know, when you're winning games and, you know, but he's kept a kind of kind of calm amongst the whole the whole squad, not just Gauss Southgate, but Steve Holland and the whole staff deserve a lot of credit. Um, and they conducted themselves very, very well. And you look at the stuff that Sterling's doing off, off the field, Rashford's doing off the field, you know, it, it, they're credit to themselves, you know, and that's why I'm so, um, gutted that they haven't got the glory that they, that they deserve. Um, um, but the good thing about it is the World Cup comes around quickly next next year for various reasons. And, you know, it's time to get, it's time to move on. And I think we're building something now. I think, you know, there's a presence about this England team. You know, there's a, there's a belief about this England team that we can get better. And I'm sure Southie will be, Sarah will be sitting there thinking, well, you know, we could have done better. It wasn't the greatest <laughs> final we'll ever see. Um, but I just think once we got the first goal, we should have gone maybe gone and try and get the second goal. And I think inexperience told us just to sit back and try and soak it up. And against a very good Italian side who, who they've shown over the whole tournament, um, you can't do that against the very good sides. And um, that's probably where we, where we fell at the last hurdle. There has been some criticism of Southgate uh, today for not putting Grealish on the pitch earlier. What's your take on that? I, th I think it's easy. I, th I think the problem is, and we've seen it throughout all England's games in, in, in this campaign, you know, everything Gareth's done, he's got absolutely spot on. You know, from the first game against Croatia where he played Foden, you know, then, then, then he went into, in, into um, Saka, then he went to Sancho. You know, he played three, three at the back against the Germans. You know, everything kind of fell into his place. And I always felt that, you know, Jack Grealish was always going to be an impact player. He was never really going to be a player that starts. And um, I think Gareth always, always had that in his mind. And I think it's easy when, you know, when you, when you lose a game for people to criticise Gareth. You know, but what he's done in this campaign has been absolutely amazing to get this team to the final, you know, of a major, major European tournament. You know, and unfortunately not to win it is a, is a fantastic achievement. So it's easy to start picking bones out of, well, should have brought Grealish on early on, should have brought Sancho early on. You know, we've got, we got to forget about that. We've just got to think we've kind of made our country proud. As much as we didn't win the game, you know, and win the tournament, you know, we've come a long, 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 long way since 2018. It's interesting looking at the medal presentation, Paul, uh... Kane and, and Southgate presenting themselves w with <clears> such <throat> dignity. Uh, the other England players, and I, and I guess this is understandable, the, the moment that silver medal is going around their neck, they're just ripping it off. They don't even want the silver. D do you understand that? No, I do. I do, and I think I would have been exactly the same if we beat the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we beat the Germans and lost to the Czech Republic in, in, in the final. Um, 
as much as we were getting kind of over the top, you know, saying it's coming home, it's coming home, I always felt it was going to be a tough game against the Italians. You know, I felt we've only been tested really against the Germans, which we probably came through comfortably. But, um, but um, you know, against the Italians, I thought they were very, I thought they were the best side in the tournament, to be honest. And um, listen, I think we've got to understand we've come runners up. It's better what we've done for a long, long time. And that medal should probably stay in their, in, in their trophy room as a, as a reminder that, you know, we, we don't want to be second best. We're not happy to just be in the, in the final of the Euros 20. You know, we're here to win it. And um, unfortunately, this time we haven't. Yeah, indeed. Um, how, how, why do different players react so differently after a big loss like this? I mean, we're seeing Declan Rice just sobbing uncontrollably. The emotions have really got to him. Some of the other players look <clears throat> more angry. Uh, what, what's that mood like? Why do different players react so differently in, in these, these moments of defeat? I, I, I think, you know, when you kind of think about it, I think as, as a young player, um, you know, you, you kind of think, you know, to be in this situation at such a young age like Declan Rice, so I thought was absolutely outstanding. You know, you kind of feel that your chance is gone, even though he's still a young player. And, um, and I think maybe for the senior players, it's more a case of, Anger, frustration, you know, again, this was a perfect campaign for us with the games at Wembley, with the teams we've had to face, you know, with Ukraine and Denmark. Uh, this was a perfect, another great opportunity for us to win a major trophy um, since 2018. So, you know, you can see different sides of the coin. You can see, well, some people get upset, some people get emotional, some people keep it in themselves, you know. And, um, you know, when I missed the, in 98 penalty, you know, I was emotional. Because I know how much it means to not just the team, not to, to just to, to the to the manager, but also to the fans. And I think that's why you see that emotional come out in people like Declan Rice. You know, he's an emotional guy, and um, you know you can see the hurt on the fans' face. You can see the anxiety. You know, and um, it's a shame. You know, we've been seeing it's coming home for the last two weeks, and you know now it's not coming home. So <laughs> it looked like a bit false, to be honest. But um, listen, you know we'll be back. You know we'll be back stronger and better, and with more experience. And look, Paul, you've got to admit, we, we had a, a, a load of disappointments during the noughties where we weren't even close to a final. So actually, the state of the game for England football, despite this disappointment, is actually very positive. It should be. And I think um, tonight it won't be. I think tonight, um, you know, we'll probably reflect and say, well, listen, this was a uh, tournament we should have won or could have won. You know, the favourites were the French and the Belgians. They got knocked out, you know, early doors. So, you know, we felt we were now probably one of the favourites to win the tournament. And you don't really get these opportunities, you know, every two years, every four years. Um, but on the flip side of the coin, you know, we've got some young players, the likes of Declan Rice, the likes of Calvin Phillips, you know, Ben Foden, Saka, you know, Sancho. You know, people who've had that, you know, tournament experience We'll hopefully stand in, in good stead in, in, in the World Cup. So you always have to take positives from defeats. As much as it hurts you, as much as you know you feel you missed a <clears throat> excuse me, a golden golden opportunity, um, we have to believe and keep faith in our, in, in our national team because what we've seen in this tournament is that everybody get together. All the fans, you know, the smile on fans' faces, the fans smile on people's faces that we've not seen for a long, long time due to the pandemic. We've now we've achieved that. Now we need to be forward and hopefully be a presence in all the next major tournaments. Oh, indeed. Paul, I've got uh, my superstar panel here tonight. Becca Hudson is representing England and we have Aldo Zilli <laughs> representing <coughs> Italy. Be Becca, what, what would you like to ask Paul? A, a little bit away from the kind of football itself. Obviously, the other thing we've been talking about for the whole duration of the Euros has been sort of taking the knee. And I wondered, Paul, what your kind of stance on the England squad doing that, whether that was something that you supported, and then also how you felt when back at the beginning, when we played Romania in the, in the friendlies, when, when England fans booed our national side for taking the knee. I mean, I, I just love to hear your thoughts on on all of the Black Lives Matter and how it's interacted with football this um, tournament. Yeah, I mean, I mean, listen. I think um, you know, I don't try to get too deep into Black Lives Matter, um, but I, I believe that you know we should show anything against racial racial discrimination, and I think players have a platform to do that. Um, how they show it, 
is entirely up to them. And they, by showing that, they've been nearly, nearly before the game. And you're correct, you know, back of that. I mean, probably three of the first three games, they were fan booing from the fans. I'm not sure the reason behind that, why they do it, are they against it or are they had enough of it? I, I, I'm not sure. But what I do know is that today, when we did it, because it was a final, there wasn't one boo. There was not one, one boo. Um, I'm not sure whether that was because of the final, I'm not too sure, but I think we need to keep showing you know, that we are against what, what is going on in, in, in society and um, not just football, we're just a society. And that's not just against black lives, that's against all race, colours, creeds and religions. You know, that's, that's for me, it's the whole thing. It's not just about black people. Um, but these players now, the likes of Sterling, the likes of Rashford, they all have a platform to put it out there to people. And um, we have to educate people. Sometimes fans, they'll be seen in, in, in the early group stages. Uh, we have to educate these people. And um, the more we continue to do that, and the more we continue to do nil, um, the more hopefully we, we get we get that out there. Aldo, do you want to have a final word, a victorious <laughs> word to Paul this evening? <laughs> Paul, what, what a legend you are, by the way. Uh, forgetting all the players on the on the pitch tonight, they should have had you on it. Uh, would you would you agree with me that um, uh, Southgate could have made a few more changes in the second half, and the last players, the the, the players that were actually on the pitch, uh, the second half of the um, of the last 15 minutes would have been better players to play the last 15 minutes of the second half? If you um, were honest with me. No, listen, listen, I, listen I, I always felt that, you know, if you look at England throughout the whole campaign, they've never been, you know, like the Italians. They've never been, you know, pushing forward, attacking, you know, once they lost the ball, pressing to win it back straight away. A typical Mancini team, you know, you can tell that he's been at Manchester City. Uh, because Italy played that way in, in the most of the most of the games they've played, but England have always been one of those teams who just kind of sat back, sat back, and um, tried to counterattack teams. The thing with Gareth is that he's had so many options this time. You know, when you go from Saka, Foden, Grealish, you know, he's got a lot of options. And as a manager, you feel, you, you know, you, you, what decision you make has to be the right decision. You're probably right. Maybe he should have, you know, made change one or two. But um, I think as long as the, the, the more the game went on, the more both teams become very defensive. And once he got into extra time, you could sense that nobody wanted to win it. They were too scared rather to lose it. And, um, you know, extra time was very, very poor for me. But you could tell that each manager was thinking about penalties, hence why he brought on Rashford and Sancho and, and, and Saka. Um, but listen, you know, you live and die with decisions as a manager. You know, I've been a manager, so I, I know. Um, but it is what it is, you know. It's been a great tournament for us. It's been a fantastic tournament for Italy. Um, having played in Italy, um, I can imagine what it's like in Milan and Rome and all those places because the fans are absolutely lunatics. So, um, you know, it'd be a great night in Italy, but unfortunately, it'd be a sad night in, in England. Guys, you don't live in Italy, to be honest. <laughs> Paul, I can tell you, Aldo Zilli was so happy with your analysis just then because he's saying to me, Dan, that's what I said. Exactly. That's what I said all during the game. Oh. Uh, Aldo, Aldo we, needed, we needed Paul as our manager. But no, I think Southgate did great. He did the best that we possibly could have hoped for. And I think the country will stick with him because he got us to the final. And OK, we didn't go all the way, but, but we got damn close. And it's the World Cup next year. Paul Ince, thank you for your incredible analysis in the big question tonight and for keeping our spirits high too on obviously a really devastating night for England football fans and actually for all of England and hopefully most of the UK after the team lost 3-2 to Italy in the final of the Euros. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.